Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Angela, if you're new here, this week is a big week. This is our back to school week and I am sharing with you guys every day this week, the 19th through the 26th, a new video goes up every day sharing something related to homeschooling and the best part is there is a giveaway with every video. So in this video today, we're gonna to be talking about our curriculum choices for the 2019, 2020 school year for my older kids. But before we get into that, I want to share with you what the giveaway prizes are today and how you can win them. All of the details, of course, will be down below in the description box. So do not forget to check that out for all the fine print and finer details. But today I'm gonna to be choosing two winners and two of you guys are going to receive the science unit of your choice from the good and the beautiful. So a huge thank you to them for donating those to this giveaway. So I will be choosing two of you. How you enter is pretty simple. You just need to be subscribed to my channel. Don't mind my dog clicking her toenails on the floor. Then you need to leave me a comment and tell me what was your very favorite subject in school to study. And then you need to go follow me over on Instagram. Now I know not everybody has Instagram, so not every giveaway this week um, is going to have an Instagram requirement, but some of them will. So for today, those are the three things you need to do to enter. You need to be subscribed here, you need to follow me on Instagram, and you need to leave me a comment and tell me what is your very favorite subject in school to study. All right, so without further ado, let's get into the curriculum video. I've got a short time. My husband took my kids out of the house for a little bit so I could get these videos filmed. So let's get to it. I do just wanna say a few things really quickly before we begin. You might notice behind me is very, very, is very book heavy. So we have a very eclectic style of homeschooling. Um, we pull from a lot of different things. We typically use certain curriculums as our spine, and then we fill in and pull from other areas. We are definitely not an open and go um, using one particular thing for every subject. So I just wanna explain that before we get going because I will say things later that you'll need to know that in order for it to make sense. So let's get into what we are doing with our older two girls this year and they are 10 and 12 years old. Okay, so for our main English, grammar, spelling, all of that curriculum, we have been using, we started using it last year and we are going to continue using it this year and that is the good and the beautiful. I'm just gonna show you one level really quickly, a couple of things and I've talked about this before. Um, we typically use multiple levels and pull different things from them. That's just how I like to do it is I kind of go through the table of contents of the lessons and decide which ones from different levels I want each of my kids doing. But just to give you an overview, so this is the level five that I've got in front of me right now. And so this is what the course book looks like. And then, like as you can see, for example, this is lesson 19, you have this beautiful photo here, and this is going to be a read aloud with your shared reader, then you go through the suffix able, then homophones, then there's some reading and a little bit of like um, sentence correction and editing. So these curriculums do cover a lot of things. It says here at the bottom, this covers literature, grammar and usage, punctuation, art, geography, vocabulary, and writing. And it absolutely does touch on and cover all of those different subjects. So that's your course book. And then you do have readers. There are two, well, you have a personal reader. So this is for level five. You have a personal reader. So this is what the child will be reading. And again, it will tell them when and what to read. So they read that for themselves. And then you have a shared reader that you read with the child. Um, so there is just lots and lots of reading, which I love. Yay, you see all those books behind me. We have some lofty goals for reading this year. So then you also, they also give the child a daily checklist so that they can go through here and make sure that they've done everything that they need to do because they do have um, like grammar cards. Ah, I'm dropping stuff. They have grammar cards here. So it just gives them a little checklist so they can make sure they're staying on track doing their sentence dictation, their ladders or poetry memorization, their geography cards, their course book, and their reading. Um, so this is a great little reminder. We usually make ones like this for our kids that cover all of their subjects, but that's great that it has just that one in there for that. And then these are the packs of geography cards. So that is what a level of the good and the beautiful looks like. So like I said, we'll be using a few different levels between our two girls and I kind of pull different things from each of them. Um, but that is sort of the gist of what the good and the beautiful language arts and literature looks like. I really, really have enjoyed that curriculum. My kids have enjoyed that curriculum. Um, so I'm excited to be bringing it back into our homeschool this year again. My girls will also both be doing different levels of handwriting from 
from The Good and The Beautiful. And again, I will have all this stuff linked down below. They've really, really enjoyed this. It, um, this one is the level six. It's really nice because it has them alternate doing lots of different things. So it doesn't get too boring for them. The lessons aren't too long and it's really just practice on penmanship. Uh, my girls both have a tendency to get a little bit lazy with their handwriting. So this is great. Just a reminder of like good penmanship and getting those cursive letters right. So then my 12 year old daughter is also going to be incorporating this um, curriculum this year. This is writing strands and this focuses on skills such as organization, description, and paragraphing. My goal here is just to improve her writing skills. Um, there's, you know, every kid has different areas that they excel in and different areas that um, needs improvement and things like that. But for her, she really enjoys storytelling and all of that. So I wanted to get her a curriculum that would help her really hone in and improve her writing skills. So we're adding this in for her this year. I'm not adding that in for my younger daughter. I'll show you guys in a second what else she's gonna do, but they are also both doing different levels of wordly wise. And this is just, I feel like this is just very, I like to have a few things that are just like open and go, do a page in this, um, especially for days where homeschooling needs to be shorter, we've got other things going on, something is, is pressing and we need to deal with it or whatever. Um, or especially like, for example, we are in the adoption process right now. So if you're going to have a new baby in your home, you know, you it's nice to kind of have, at least for me, I found some things that don't need as much of my attention that they can just kind of open and go and do. And so these lessons are short and quick. And so they're both gonna be doing some Wordly Wise, which is just a vocabulary curriculum. Um, I do feel like both of my girls have a good vocabulary, um, but we can always improve, can't we? So we're gonna be adding in some pages from Wordly Wise this year as well. And then one more thing in that same vein for my older daughter. This is just one of the daily um, like books from Evan Moore. These are really great. Again, if you just need something in a morning basket and a looping basket, I'm not saying, um, I'm not saying like busy work Work that you have to give them busy work every day. But these are great to have on hand when you do want them to be working on something, um, but maybe you can't quite get to them yet or whatever, but you need them to stay like in the zone focused. So I'm adding this in for her as well. This is just a six trait writing again. It's just working on all things related to writing from punctuation to narrative and things like that. So I'm adding that in for her. Um, and then for my 10 year old daughter, she is gonna be adding in these daily warm ups for reading. So this is more to help with like reading comprehension. So you go through and read a short story and then answer some questions about it just to make sure you are comprehending what you're reading. And then as far as history, social studies, things like that goes, um, again, this is something we've never done before, but my friend uses these for her girls and she said that they really enjoyed them. And so I thought, you know what? One page out of this could be fun. I love this kind of stuff. I find it fascinating. And so I'm trying to like breed a love of like history and social studies and stuff like that in my kids as well. Um, so we are gonna be doing a page from this 180 Days of Social Studies book. There's two different ones that I have here um, and they cover civics economics, geography, and history. So this will, again, just be something really fun we can add in and do um, sort of while we're doing our history or if we need just a quick one pager, but something to kind of beef up other things that we are doing. But then our actual history curriculum for this year. So if you saw my recap of last year, you know that I expressed that I enjoyed the good and the beautiful level one, but that I wasn't sure if it's what we were going to do this year. I really, really went back and forth between doing book sharks history and another year of good and beautiful. I went and looked through the syllabus for each one kind of combed through it and just ultimately decided that no one curriculum is ever gonna be exactly every single thing that you want. One of the things I really love about The Good and the Beautiful History is that it kind of goes through the full gamut of the timeline, touching on different things along the way. So instead of doing an entire year of Renaissance or an entire year of US history or something like that, you're really touching on a lot of different things each year. I just love that it covers so many different things throughout each year, uh, which keeps the kids from getting bored. If we did an entire year of ancient Egypt, they would probably just get bored after a while. So this is the history course book. Then it has this maps and images book, which is, I just love, that is the one thing that is 
utterly undeniable about the good and the beautiful is that their curriculum is so beautiful. I just love these, the artwork, the maps, everything. Like I get giddy opening this up and, and doing this curriculum. And that's when you know as a homeschool mom that something is really good is when it excites you just as much or maybe even more than your kids. And then again, this is the other part that super excites me is this timeline. We did not get this with year one. I don't know if we were supposed to and didn't or what, but it's a timeline. I am a visual person. I love to have this visual representation of when things happened on the timeline. And it's got stickers on here and it says year one stickers and year two. So maybe this was an add in that I just missed or something, but the whole idea with these is that you can cycle back through the curriculum and learn new things each time. So we will do year one, we've already done year one, we'll do year two, then three, then four, um, and then I believe, then you can start the cycle over. We will eventually get back there and do that again, but we can just go ahead and put the stickers on. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited about having a timeline, a visual representation of what we're learning and where things were happening. I think that will help. Um, a few of my kids are very visual learners as well, so I think that will help them too. So that curriculum has read alouds that go with it. So we, there's amazing lists on the Good and the Beautiful's website of different read alouds. Here's the ones that it came with and then I did go through that list and order a whole bunch of other books. Because my girls are a little bit older, we did choose some of the older read alouds. Um, but I just wanted to show you, this one has Peter and the Pilgrims, The Singing Tree, Daughter of the Mountains, and Bjorn the Proud. Those are the recommended readers. So it's unit one is Daughter of the Mountains, unit two is Bjorn the Proud, unit three is Peter and the Pilgrims, and unit four is The Singing Tree. Um, in just a second, I'm gonna go through and show you our entire book selection for the year, everything that my girls will be reading individually, everything I will be reading aloud to them. And the history curriculum also comes with a game. The year one is Keys of History, and this is Explorer's Settler's History Game. It looks like it's just like a card game in a tin. So it also comes with a fun game that you can play. The other thing that we are gonna be trying out this year, adding in with all of my children, we're gonna be attempting to do it together. I don't have it printed out yet to show you, but it is the Brave Writer Program. Um, I've been super interested in learning more about this after seeing, um, well shoot, her page used to be Hip Homeschooling Mom, but I think it's Homeschool On now. She shared about Brave Writer and has talked a lot about Brave Writer and I started kind of following them on Instagram and just sort of seeing more what they're about and I've really been intrigued with the program. So that's something we're gonna be attempting to incorporate with a few of our children um, this year as well, but I don't have it because it's a download and you need to print it and I haven't gotten that far yet. So Brave Writer, again, I will leave everything linked down below if you wanna go check it out. So as far as our science units this year, we have decided that we are going to be doing, and these are the ones if you win the giveaway that you will be able to pick. We'll have two different winners you'll be able to pick. They have more than this. This is just the ones that we've chosen for this year. Our meteorology, space science, arthropods, and botany. So my kids are very excited about those. I am gonna be doing individual videos to show you guys what we're pulling together for each one of these units. As you can see, these are still shrink wrapped. I am still in homeschool prep mode over here. We are by no means like ready to start our school year yet. We've got a lot going on in our family this year, so we're actually pushing the start of our homeschool out a good month or more later than we usually do, but that is the beauty of homeschooling is that you get to make those kind of changes and stuff when you need to. So I've still got some time to get everything prepped. I've just been waiting for everything to come in, and I'm pretty sure everything's here. As I'm sitting down to film this video, I'm sure I'm gonna see things that are missing, but um, yeah, I'm pretty sure everything's here, so I still need to get it all organized and stuff like that, but those are the units that we are gonna be doing. All right, so as far as Bible goes, we have a couple of different things we're working with here this year for my older girls, and I'll talk more about how we fit in all this stuff and what our schedule is and everything in future videos, um, but the girls are both gonna be using these Write the Word for Kids books. These are Fruit of the Spirit, Write the Word for Kids. These are from Cultivate What Matters. I absolutely love these. I think they are so beautiful. Such a wonderful, wonderful way for kids to get into scripture writing and practice scripture writing. There's a little bit of coloring in here and stuff too. I just really think these are wonderful and I think my girls are really gonna enjoy them. So they're gonna be utilizing these. 
I also shared, this is not really our Bible, but I also shared about these three minute gratitude journals and I forgot to link them last time. So I will link them for you guys down below if you wanna check these out. Um, these are things that my girls are gonna be doing in the evening as part of their bedtime routine is their gratitude journals. Um, but I did want to show them because I talked about them before and I got a lot of questions. So we will be using these in the evening. And then as far as like devotional stuff goes, um, they'll be doing their scripture writing, but then we also are still gonna continue using Melanie Shankle's Fearless Faith devotional for girls. I think this is great if you have some slightly older girls, maybe I would say like fourth grade and above. I don't know, she probably says on here what age this is for and I'm just making that up. But yeah, this one. Then we are also adding in the Purpose Driven Devotional for Kids as well. So we'll be adding, this is a new one for us this year that we're gonna try out. We are gonna be doing Who is God by Apologia. So I got the curriculum book and then I got each of the girls one of the notebooks that they will work in individually. And I'll explain more how, we in, how we're gonna incorporate this into our day, like I said, in a future video where I'm gonna share like our daily schedule and routine and everything with you guys. I'll share with you kind of how we break all this stuff up because some of this is stuff we do outside of our traditional school hours, if you will. So that's what we're doing for Bible. And then our different looping baskets this year. So you guys know we utilize a looping basket. I can put my video that I made last year sharing with you how we how we do it and kind of what was in our looping basket at that time. Um, I'm gonna tell you right now what different things we're looping and then I think I will do a separate video showing you that because I don't have all of the items for everything right now because I, just not gonna buy everything a full year in advance. Some of the stuff will happen later in the year. We are gonna be continuing our loop with geography and presidents, and this year we're also gonna be doing art. So that will be one of our baskets of loop will be geography, presidents, and art. Um, I'm really excited. I've got some really good stuff for the art one. That's, you know, we've kind of, we did geography and presidents last year. So I have most of the resources for that. I don't feel like I need to add anything new to that. Um, but the art, I got some new resources for that and I'm very excited about it. And then our second looping basket. So this one I'm super excited about. We're gonna be doing amazing women throughout history, black history, and a, a loop that I'm calling descent. That is basically gonna be learning about various people throughout history who have sort of bucked the system, gone against the status quo, and stood up for what they knew was right in a time when society and culture told them, this was how you were supposed to do something, this is how we treat these people, this is how we do this, and people who sort of stood up, and just learning about people who fought back against that and who pushed for what was right, even when it went against whatever their cultural norms were. So I want my children to learn about various people who showed extreme strength of character um, at times when it wasn't popular. So I'm really excited about that loop, which I think is why we're gonna do it second. Even though I really wanna start it right now, I wanna make sure I have everything that I really, really want for that loop. So I'm, I will promise to share that with you guys once I have everything pulled together for it. Um, and then the other thing that my girls are adding in, as far as elective goes, they're gonna be doing typing again this year. And they are also both really wanting to learn photography. So we are gonna combine, I found this book on Amazon called Go Photo an activity book for kids. They're gonna be doing this in combination with taking my photography e-course. I wrote a photography e-course and it also combines, so it combines written lessons with video lessons. So my girls are actually gonna be taking my photography e-course. I'll have that link down below if you guys want and I'll actually do a back to school discount. So I'll do 10% off that course if you guys are interested in purchasing it for yourself. It's definitely not geared towards kids. It is geared towards like moms, um, but I think my kids can still absolutely do it. And I, you know, now that I'm like sitting here talking about it, maybe I will redo that course for like as a homeschool course, something that y'all could um, have your kids take and it would be online and the lessons would be video lessons online. So I might redo that. Let me know in the comments if you guys would be interested in that. But so my girls are gonna be doing this and then taking my photography course. Um, as one of their like electives. So that is everything as far as like curriculum goes. I am going to now show you guys all of the readers that we are gonna be doing this year. All right, so here's all of our different readers and read alouds. I am not going to break it up by who is reading what and all of that. I'm just gonna show you all of the books. So we have Esperanza Rising, Beatnest Boy, Calico Bush. We're gonna do Who Was Galileo? Who Was Isaac Newton? Sing Down the Moon, Om Casto. Pocahontas and the Strangers, Phoebe the Spy, William Penn, Ernest Shackleton, William Bradford, 
Carry On Mr. Bowditch, Catherine Called Birdie, The Ides of April, Mystery of the Roman Ransom, The Badoon's Gazelle, Nori Ryan's Song, The American Twins of the Revolution, The Secret Garden, The Door in the Wall, The Reign of Terror, A Story of the French Revolution, Mara, Daughter of the Nile, Black Horses for the King, Black Fox of Lorne, Archimedes and the Door of Science, a Cup of Cold Water, The Compassion of Nurse Edith Cavill, Once Upon a Time, The Way America Was. And this is one of our fun books that's for um, the older kids as well as the younger kids. And this is Love Does by Bob Goff. This is the kids version of that book. All right, guys, that is everything. I hope you enjoyed this sort of part one of our curriculum choices. I am gonna be doing a part two because I didn't want this video to be, it's already gonna be long, so I didn't want it to be crazy long. So I'm gonna be doing a part two where I'm gonna share with you what our younger grade kids are gonna be doing this year for school as well. So that one will also have giveaways and everything for our back to school week. So this is super fun. I love doing this. Thank you guys so much for um, tuning in and watching and enjoying this stuff with me. So I'll see y'all back here tomorrow for another back to school video. Bye.